Time for you to go, I think, huh? We're going to say goodbye uh, temporarily to uh, Pierre-Yves, who's going outside. He's never seen a launch from here, and he's going to watch the action from the terrace. We'll get his reactions when he comes back. Don't get lost. Have fun out there. This is a split-screen image. The last thing you're going to see, so we want to explain it, liquid hydrogen on the left, liquid oxygen on the right. These are the propellant feeder arms. It's a close-up shot. The camera will pull back. You'll get a better view. They're going into the upper stage. This stage needs to be filled up to the last minute because the cold propellant we're using evaporates in this heat. Liquid oxygen is at minus 160 degrees, liquid hydrogen minus 240. They boil off and need constant topping up. Uh, topping up. The DDO is going to call out the one minute mark now and we'll be into the final 60 seconds of tonight's mission. Top moins une minute. All that's left is to explain the ignition sequence so you can get that uh, while you're watching. Remember we mentioned how power was passing from the ground to the launcher to make her autonomous. Well this phase is carried out by the onboard computer. Here's what to watch for. The sequence begins when the cryogenic arms, those are the yellow bars in the middle there, they will swing back at minus five seconds. At zero you'll hear the DDO call out allumage which means ignition and the main engine will light but we do not lift off. You count to seven for seven seconds, the computers are checking the performance in the main engine while it's burning on the pad. They do that twice to confirm it. If all is well, then they give the orders to light like the boosters, and away we go. We'll let you listen to the DDO as he calls out the final countdown. A tous les DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage du moteur Vulcain. Allumage des deux EAP, décollage. Underway, beautiful shots. Close up. This is taken yeah. by our cameraman Zaza out at the terrace. Hope uh, Pierre Yves is enjoying himself. Did you uh, see the cryo arms swing open? And did you count to seven? Right on time at 1818 local time. Ariane 5 began her mission lifting off perfectly from the ground, powering off the pad through the low clouds and into the skies uh, above French Guiana. Here, these are beautiful shots. Always impressive. Ariane rising into the sky. Look at that above uh, French Guiana leaving a trail of vapor. Right now, she weighs 775, 775 tons at liftoff. She's burning five tons of fuel per second. The DDO says everything is okay on board. Two and a half tons in each booster per second. And the core stage burning another 300 kilos per second. Area now following the program in the onboard computer, which is located in the vehicle equipment bay that's just under the satellites, which gives all the orders, including stage separations, which you'll soon begin to see. The VEB, vehicle equipment bay, is the cockpit of the launcher, if you will. All the equipment weighs about a ton. We're in the first of uh, four flight phases. The first three are powered. The last is not. We'll describe each in turn when the period gets back so that you can follow Ariane as she heads across the Atlantic in about 20 minutes, not even 20 minutes, where she'll separate the satellites roughly over the two coasts of Africa. Right now, the first flight phase, the single core stage engine is burning, and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will burn for another six or seven seconds, 240 tons, in just over two minutes. They're the first to be extinguished. Des accélération à the DDO has just called out the, the extinction. You can see them falling away, and the single point of light burning below them, that's the main engine still burning the core stage. What it looks like up there as they drop off the, uh, the vehicle, there's another one of course out of camera range uh, on the left. They're going to fall about 500 kilometers from shore. Look at that beautiful shot. The main engine still burning in the middle and the two boosters to either side. They're going to they're gonna fall, uh, the boosters are, into a protected area. French Guiana chosen in part as a base for its opening on the ocean. La trajectoire du lanceur est normale. Launches posing no threat to the local uh, 
population. Before the boosters are empty of their fuel, their push diminishes, and the onboard computer senses this drop in acceleration and gives the order to separate them. We're in the second powered flight phase, the main engine burning alone, and all is normal, says the DDO. And Pierre-Yves has come back, and his eyes are as big as dinner plates. How is yes, it out there? That was a great experience. Uh, so it starts with a, a bright glow on, on the horizon. And uh, then it uh, rises up uh, along the sky. The, it leaves a trail of uh, clouds lit by the sun. And uh, it was a fantastic, it was fantastic. Really a great experience. What, what impressed you most? The sight, the sound? Uh, the trail of clouds lit by the sun. That was really unexpected. Uh, with the sunset, it, it had uh, many rich colors from uh, the, uh, pink to, to, to white, uh, yellow. Fantastic. Beautiful. Very nice. Well, I hope that inspires some of you to come down and watch a launch. We have separated the fairing, and we can separate that now because... Because there's no air around this, the upper satellite anymore. The fairing protects the satellite. No more fairing needed. So That's fairing right. jettison then saves two tons for the rest of the mission. All right, briefly get, get us started. On the upper left, you see the cursor, and on the lower left, the three letters, there's A and V on the bottom. Start with the uh, cursor on the top. So cursor on the top, in fact, is... We'll have to come back from the news after that. We'll get a description of all that from Pierre-Yves. For now, the latest news from Ariane Space.